Was that all right freestyling at the end? In today's video, I'm gonna show you the pieces of equipment that I cannot live without in my kitchen. So you've all been asking me for a long, long time to tell you the top essential pieces of equipment that I use in my kitchen. And there is certainly a, a good seven that I couldn't live without. First up, I'm gonna get straight into it. A chef's best friend, sharp knives. So I made a video a long, long time ago called How to Cut Like a Chef, and it explains how to cut properly and how to keep safe when using knives. Knives are a chef's best friend. And when I worked in professional kitchens, I had a toolbox. I used to carry around this toolbox to all the kitchens I worked at. And um, back then when I was cooking meat, fish, everything, I had various different knives to do different jobs. But now cooking vegetables and vegan food, I just have a couple of knives a great vegetable chopper, a serrated knife for bread and things like that. And it's a smaller version too, but I talk about all my knives in the How to Cut Like a Chef video. Keeping them sharp is really important too. I also talk about how to sharpen it properly. I also now use a whetstone that helps take a knife uh, that's really blunt and makes it razor sharp again, like it's brand new. So learn how to use a whetstone. There's plenty of videos on YouTube explaining how to use one of those if you're serious about keeping a knife sharp. If I could choose between cutting myself with a blunt knife and a sharp knife, I'd choose a sharp knife every time. Um, but ideally we wouldn't cut ourselves at all and especially watch my How to Cut Like a Chef video, you won't be cutting yourself hopefully. So one that's very underrated, a rubber spatula or silicon spatula. I'm, I'm their biggest fan, I really am. Because chefs, we like efficiency. And if you're trying to get a sauce out of a saucepan and you're using a metal or a wooden spoon, you can't get everything. And this allows you to get everything out and saves waste. Another thing that chefs hate, waste. So these are essential in my kitchen. I couldn't live without a rubber spatula. Okay, number three, chopping board. So important to have a really good sturdy chopping board. I prefer a wooden chopping board. After all, I'm not cutting any meat or fish. I'm keeping this clean as possible, just cutting vegetables and I clean it with hot soapy water after. I get asked all the time where I got my beautiful wooden chopping board from. Now there's a whole video on this. So if you wanna go and watch that, go and watch that. I also talk about my plates and bowl collection in that video too, so it's worth checking out. But um, you don't have to get a chopping board as big as this one. However, um, as big as you can get really, Just whatever can fit on your kitchen counter. I often see people recreating my recipes and they're trying to cut stuff on this little plastic board and it's sliding around every time they cut. It's so dangerous and it just doesn't, it's just not efficient. So please, if you wanna take cooking seriously, invest in a good board. One final tip in terms of chopping board, make sure you get a nice wet, damp towel or something like that underneath the board to stop it moving. Okay, next essential item, bamboo steaming baskets. This is quite a big one. You can get small ones, but so this one is perfect for my wok that I sit this on top of to steam my vegetables. Now, the reason why I like using a bamboo steamer or just a steamer in general, you're able to keep the nutrients and the flavor in the vegetables a lot more so than if you were to boil them. The reason being all of the nutrients and flavor just leaks into the water. I can also just lift off the lid, check if something's cooked by my eye or I can just give it a little taste. But I will say in my new book, Plants Only Kitchen, I have a whole chart on uh, vegetable steaming times using one of these and instructions on how to use it. You can also make gyozas, dumplings, and a whole array of amazing Asian um, dishes in bamboo steamers. So please get these. These are so cheap to buy. Look on Google to find one, or you can go to an Asian supermarket and pick them up. Very cheap and an amazing piece of equipment. And just in terms of washing, you can scrub them with soap, soapy water to clean them, or I actually just put them in a dishwasher. They come out fine, so they're really easy to look after too. Next up, we've just talked about bamboo steamers and to use one of those, you need a good wok. Um, so I fill this up with a little bit of water and then pop the bamboo steamer on top and that steam cooks the veg. So let's talk about my wok first. Now you don't have to splash a lot of money on a wok. If you look after your wok correctly, it'll last you a long, long time. I've had this for ages and it's not the most expensive one. Again, from an Asian supermarket, give it a nice grease every now and then, treat it properly, soap, wash it properly as well. It'll last you a very long, long time. So 
a very important piece of equipment for me, not only for steaming vegetables, but stir fries, curry, stew. You can cook things quickly because of the high sides, the heat is able to get right around the pan and uh, cook things really efficiently. I love cooking in woks. Wok on. That was the worst on ever. <laughs> oh. So next general purpose frying pans, cooking pans. I love these two. These just picked up from a kitchen store. Honestly, if you look after pans properly, you're not using metal in them. They'll last a very long, long time. Also cast iron pans. I love using these because you're able to put them in the oven as well. When I'm buying pans in the future, um, I'll always buy pans with metal handles. That's what we use in professional kitchens because I couldn't put something like this in the oven because it's got a wooden handle. You want something that you can cook on top and put in the oven straight away. So try and buy pans with metal handles that, so you can put them in the oven too. Okay, saucepans. Now it's really important to have a good collection or different sizes, I think and multiple as well. If you're cooking a roast or something like that, you often have lots of pans going all on at the same time. So when you're buying saucepans, buy a, big, a good set. And this is actually, these are about 100 years old. These are French copper pans that I bought from a market. And pans last for ages if you look after them right. These could do with a little polish now. And a good way of cleaning these is actually by mixing some white wine vinegar with some salt and using that to scrub the edges. And these go so shiny. So these can be revamped and brought back to life. But I use these so often. I'm just hard finding the time to actually give them a good scrub. But it doesn't affect anything the outside of them. I think they're rustically beautiful. Invest in some decent saucepans. Also make sure that your pans come with some good lids. When I bought these, they didn't have any lids, but I went to the market shortly after buying these and I found these things. And these are the lids that go with these pans. as just as old as those pans. I like having a bit of character. These all tell a story to me. I wonder what was cooked in these before I had them. It's really interesting. And these will last ages and ages and ages. Copper pans are my favorite. Okay, very important, blender. Now I think this is an essential in my kitchen for sure. Making soups, making purees, making nut butters, making um, raw cakes. So many things I use my blender for. If I didn't want to chop up a base for a bolognese, for example, I would throw it in the blender and blitz it up. So it saves time, it's efficient. And uh, investing in a good one is important. You want a high speed, powerful blender, especially with vegan cooking. For the last few years, I've been using my Ninja blender, which is great. And recently I got this Vitamix 2, which is also amazing. So whatever your price range, try and get a powerful one, invest in it, look after it, and it will really help you in the kitchen. I also recommend getting a stick blender too. I love um, blitzing up soups with that if you want it quite chunky, or you can make a mayonnaise and things like that with a stick blender. Okay, finally, we're gonna wrap it up here with some miscellaneous, there's a good word for you. Wow, I'm learning some vocabulary. Just said vocabulary, wow. Anyway, things like whisks, ladles, big, big metal spoons, a spider. Very, this is very essential actually for me, a spider getting vegetables out of a pot um, when you're deep frying so that the oil, excess oil drips away. Very essential, a spider. Um, a sieve, really important, a sieve. There is my sieve. I think actually my kitchen could do with two sieves, actually is important. I've got a mini one too, great for like icing sugar if you're dusting a, a cake or if you just need to strain something small, use a little one. A slotted spoon is very important if you're cooking some um, raviolis or something like that. I mean, it's not hugely essential how often you're gonna be making ravioli, I don't know, but getting things out and you want the water to drain it away, it's very important. Wooden spoon, zester. Now these aren't expensive things, so you can get, you can get these at all good cooking shops. A palette knife, or a, they call this a fish slice. But if you just want to flip something over, a palette knife will do the job too. And of course, a rolling pin. I think that's pretty much everything. I will say also some good quality baking trays. Now I've got loads of different sizes of these under my oven. 
really important, good quality, get a few different sizes. I'm gonna pop a link to my recommended uh, products below that you can purchase these items from. I'm not associated with any of the brands whatsoever, but just wanna help you guys out. I've got a nice jumbo here. Um, if I wanna just shout a few things out as well, I couldn't live without my funnel. I don't know why getting oil back into a pot or sources into a small jar, important. Cup measures, that's my favorite way of measuring things using a cup measure. Two hours later. Baking dishes, ceramic ones for lasagnas. Great, great pieces of equipment. A teapot, I do like a teapot. Juicer, I love a juicer because I make my juices all the time. Um, I've got some cake molds here. These are called Dario molds. These are set in like panna cottas and jellies and things like that. Mixing bowl, that could be on the number one in the list. A mixing bowl, various different sizes. Mixing bowl, very important. I think that's it. There we go. There's my kitchen essentials. See you soon with another video. But the most essential thing out of all kitchen equipment is some good recipes. So here's my new cookbook, Plants Only Kitchen, and yourself. Be enthusiastic to cook the recipes. Cooking is meditative, it's fun, um, it's relaxing, it's rewarding. So you're the most important piece of equipment in the kitchen, and without you, you won't be able to cook anything. So cook, enjoy it, and do it efficiently using the equipment that I've mentioned. Goodbye. Is that all right, freestyling at the end?